testimony this morning about God's faithfulness and what He's doing in your life. Well, our expression is this. We are still excited about all the excitement. And all the excitement revolves around Jesus. Amen. Our exercise, a.k.a. our mission statement, is this. LFC, oh, I need, to, I need to dismiss our children for Children's Church. Two weeks in a row, I've been so fired up to do the message, I haven't had a, sorry guys, kiddos, enjoy so let's, let's do this again. Our expression is this. We are still excited about all the excitement, and all the excitement still revolves around Jesus. Our exercise, a.k.a. our mission statement, is this. LFCN exists to proclaim the gospel and the core beliefs of the church of the Nazarene, pledging all that we have to that effort. Pledging all that we have to that effort. Say that with me. Pledging all that we have to that effort. We will work together to help people engage the one true God. Follow his son Jesus and then be filled woo, with the Holy Spirit. Now, how are we going to get all that done? Well, God has given us an example to follow. A blueprint, if you will. And you can find that example in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Now, we will not read that portion of Scripture today. But for the next four or five Sundays, we'll be focusing in on how are we going to accomplish our vision statement. What must we do on a weekly basis to make sure that we are aligning ourselves with the mission that God has given to us here at Lufkin First Church of the Nazarene? And so in Acts, in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, um, there are some everyday habits that God very clearly gives us in regards to being the church that he wants us to be. And the first habit, which I just am thrilled with, I think every New Testament church has this habit, they celebrate this habit, they work this habit, they focus on this habit, and here's the habit, that we must be enthralled by God. We must be captivated by Him, as the great psalm says. We must be totally captivated, distracted, and totally all about who He is, what He's done, what He wants to do. And folks, when we do that, a sense of worship swells up within us, and that worship gives way to verbal articulation, a.k.a. praise. We can't help ourselves. We are so taken back by what he's done, by who he is, by how much he loves us, by what he's doing in our lives and in our church, that every single conversation that we're a part of includes God. Every time we're together, every conversation, every thought, every fellowship, there's something about God and what he's doing and who he is and how great he is and how much he loves us and how faithful he is and that he can be trusted in this day and every day to come. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy of praise this morning. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm talking about praise. I'm talking about his people getting just and fired up about what he's done and how blessed you are and the truth of the matter is you're not going to hell as your sins deserve but instead God's grace has covered the shortfall today. God's beautiful. He's wonderful. He's glorious. There is no hymn too fast. No preacher too loud. No song too exciting. No, no song that captivates the greatness of our God. And if we can't get fired up about who he is 
and what he's done, I'm not sure who is going to get fired up about who he is and what he's done. If you know how blessed you are this morning, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God is worthy of our praise. Amen. amen. And so that's our number one habit. That's how we're going to get our vision accomplished. That's how we're going to carry out our mission statement. First and foremost, it's going to continue to be all about God, what He's done, who He is, and where we're going. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Amen? Wow. God wants God wants us to have all of Him we want. And the truth is, Him, we can get all of Him that we want. Amen? When we seek Him, He will be found. If you're happy and you know it this morning, say amen. Amen. Woo. And so Acts 47, just, I mean, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, just comes right out and says it. That very first church, they were so in awe of God. They were so enthralled by Him. They were so captivated by who He was and what He'd done. They were in awe of Him, and so they praised Him. <laughs> they praised Him. And one of my favorite stories in the entirety of the Bible in regards to worshiping and praising God is the great story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, folks, i got to tell you, I want to say it again, Pat. I know that this church is full of great and godly people. But every once in a while, God comes to me and reminds me that it's okay for us to gather together. And every single word and every single part of the message is intended to lift God's people up and remind them that this too shall pass. Whatever's going on in your life, it's okay. I've got your back. And so this morning, let none of us go home under the thumb of the devil. But may we all go home leaping and praising God because we know that nothing is impossible for him. Can I get an amen? amen. If you have your Bibles, Daniel chapter 3. Would you stand with me for the reading of God's word? Daniel chapter 3. Verses 13 through 30. Daniel chapter 3, verses 13 through 30. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But... If you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then, huh, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Well, we all know what God rescued him, huh? Them? Hallelujah. The only uppercase G God in existence. He's worthy of our praise this morning. Amen? Amen. Let me keep on reading here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, you piece of work, you. That's not in your Bible, but it's in mine. You piece of work, you. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. Hallelujah. And he will deliver us. Now that's a God worthy of praise. Amen? From your majesty's hand. But if he does, this is really cool. But if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, you piece of work, you, that we will not serve your gods 
or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude, uh, his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing the robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up? and threw into the fire. They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Well, I got news for him. It was the son of God. Amen? Amen. And Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants, of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the, pre the prefects, the governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not, had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Is our God greater or what? Amen? Amen? You may be seated. Folks, that's some story. Enjoy the video. to bend something that is hard and unyielding. 
What do we do with it? We put it into the fire. Majesty, take it. Burn. 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 Now that's a God who's worthy of our prayer. 
praise today. I want to remind you, when we talk about a God, we're talking about lowercase g gods. But when we're talking about the God, we're talking about the only uppercase g God in existence. It's that God that we praise today. It's that God that tells us that it can be well with our soul. Though the world's falling apart around us, it can be well with our soul today because we are connected to the only uppercase G God in all of existence. Today, I want you to celebrate. I want you to be reminded that no matter what's going on in your life, God is greater today. Amen? My guest is Randy. There's been things in all of our past where the devil loved to tease us and say, nah, 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 your God has deserted you. But we know our only uppercase G God has never deserted us. Amen? Our, our lives are littered with signposts of God's faithfulness. He's been there all along. He's never let us down once. And today, no matter what we're going through, our God is greater. Hallelujah. He loves us this morning. Amen. Is there some Nazarene that wants to say hallelujah today for his love and his goodness? Amen. Amen. Wow. I want to remind us that we're not, we're not like bums who've been tossed aside when things aren't going our way. When things get tough and, and when things don't seem to be going in the direction that we want them to go, we've got to re be reminded of what David says in Psalm 37, 25, where David says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Hallelujah. I have never once seen those who live right forsaken by God. Is there someone that can give testimony to that today? You lived right and God came through. He was there all the time. He never let you down. You were a little scared. You might have gotten a little nervous, but God says, you know what? I've got your back. Hallelujah. He still has our back this morning. Amen. I don't care what you're going through. If it's family, if it's finances, if it's the future, I want you to go away this morning with victory. I'm tired of God's people, Zeta, living under the thumb of the enemy. I want us to claim victory in the good times and the bad times. We we don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. We don't have to worry about any of that because God has promised to take care of our needs. Amen? Our needs. If you are provided for today, let's praise the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. Amen? Amen. Wow. Well, let me finish on with that verse. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Wow. What do the righteous have to worry about? You're right. Absolutely nothing. All of our needs will be taken care of. We need to remember that we are not bums wandering through the world, but rather we are children of the King. Our God is the Creator. He is all-powerful. Can I get an amen? He's all-powerful. Amen? God owns it all, and He is perfect, perfectly capable of aiding us in our time of need. Here's what I want us to do, Randy. If we're God's kids, let's start acting like it. Amen? If we're God's kids, let's start living like it. No matter what comes our way, we realize that we're connected. We've got connections today. God is on our side. Oh, folks, don't go away this morning down and out, but go away walking and leaping and praising God because God has your back and he has my back. He's been there all along. He's never let me down. Even when I let him down, he's never let me down. Our God is good this morning. He's deserving of our praise. Let's praise the church together. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people. For his blood can wash away each stain. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that they were connected. Turn to the person to your 
left or right and say, yo, God is in control. Or the person behind you or in front of you and say, yo, God is in control. Now, we've said it. Do we really believe it today? Say amen. amen. I mean, do we believe it in the midst of crazy, long-term, never-ending back problems? I think Kim believes today that God is still in control. Amen? Do we believe it when everything's not going our way? Do we believe it when the kids aren't listening? Do we believe it when there's more bills than there are money? Do we believe it when we're going through a nasty divorce? Do we believe that God's in control? I believe today. How about you? Do we believe when our spouse goes to heaven? Do we believe when we're not feeling well? Do we believe when we're getting a little bit more mature and our back goes out more than we do or vice versa? You know, do we believe that God is in control? Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen? Amen. He is worthy of our praise today. Enthralled by God, captivated by Him. Wow. Look at verse 17. God is able. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just came right out and said it. God is able. Say it with me. God is able. Folks, nothing's changed. He is totally able to overcome anything that's overcoming you. Hallelujah. No matter how hot things get in your kitchen, God still has his, God has his hands on your thermostat. Amen? And nothing is too hot for him. I'm talking about a God who controls everything. If you believe in that control this morning, say, Hallelujah. Luke 137 is just as true as it's ever been. Let's all say it together. Nothing is impossible with him. Say it again, folks. Nothing is impossible with him. Is there anybody that can testify this morning, Michael, to that truth that nothing is impossible for him? Darcyl, do you believe it today? Oh, yes. Ron, do you believe it? Jimmy, do you believe it? David, do you believe it? Jimmy P, do you believe it? Nothing is impossible for him. Let's live like that. May there be a little bit of a George Jefferson strut that I like to strut every once in a while that God's got my back and he is in control in every situation, in and out of season, because we know that he uses his church to make a difference in the lives of each other. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be a part of Lufkin First Church of the Nazarene. How about you? Amen? Amen. Wow. God laughingly asks this question in Jeremiah 32, 27, where he asks, is anything too hard for me? Duh. Is anything too hard for me? But this last point is, I wanted to save an extra minute as I flew through those first two points because this last one is not only inspirational, but it might challenge us a smidgen. There might be a toe that gets stepped on a stoke because God would remind us today that even though you're going through a tough time, it doesn't mean that you have to crawl into the closet or hide under a rock, but the truth is when God's people go through tough times, we just keep on acting like God's people because we know he's faithful. We keep on coming to church. We keep on tithing. We keep on serving because God's going to take care of it. It's our job to serve. It's God's job to take care of the predicaments that come our way. I say we can still be committed in the good times and the bad times. Good preaching, Pastor Don. Amen? And I bragged on you all last Wednesday night. I've never seen a congregation so willingly ready to keep on serving no matter what's going on in your life. What a privilege to pastor such awesome people. I know what's going on. Maybe other people don't. But you continue to, to serve and do no matter what's going on. 
going on. It's a, it's a testimony to your testimony that you know that we trust and obey and God comes through every time. Now, that's the life I live. How about you, Ron Rawls? Amen? Trust and obey because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Verses 16 and 17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were displaying to the whole world their determination to serve God. Folks, i got to tell you, they were about to be ready. They were getting ready to be tossed into a fiery furnace. The things were rough for them. I mean, things were, I'm not sure it gets more, it doesn't get much more awful than being pitched into a fiery furnace, and yet they went along serving God, keeping on with the faith, no matter what came their way. And I, I want to encourage all of us that most of us will never face a fiery furnace. And yet the smallest wind begins to blow, and the smallest little thing comes up, and we get a little hiccup, or a little this, or a little that. Oh, let God's people continue to serve. Let their God's people, knowing that God has their back, will be faithful. God will be faithful. God has it under control. Let's keep on serving because our God is that great. Amen? I'll keep serving. Randy, will you keep on serving with me? David, will you keep on serving with me? How about you, John? What about you, Sandy? Jimmy R., Mike, Cheryl, let's keep on serving Charlene no matter what comes our way because our God is greater today. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't have to go into the closet and lock the door and hope that someone notices because God would tell us nothing is impossible for Him. Good preaching, Pastor Don. I think that when we're going through a fiery trial, when things aren't going our way, when we're distracted or concerned or bum-fuzzled, it's at that point when our faith is put on display for the whole world to see that we either believe what we say we believe or we don't. That we believe what we say we believe or we don't. And Randy, how many times must God come through for us before we'll get it through our thick heads that God is not about to abandon us now. How many times must God part the Red Sea and send quail like there's no tomorrow and stop the Jordan River from flowing upstream miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives? Why would we ever want to take a step back and quit serving and disengage and feel sorry for ourselves in light of all that God has done? That's what the devil wants. He wants you to lock yourself in a closet and throw a pity party and pout because at that point you're not effective. But it's okay for God's people to act like they're God's people and say, you know what? No matter what comes my way, I know that my God's greater. I don't care if it's a fiery furnace. I don't care if it's a bunch of lion. I don't care if it's plagues or locusts. I don't care what it is. My God promises me that the righteous 